Now, when all of the above, along with the lackeys and servants, had been assembled at Silling, the gates were sealed and the entire company was marched into the auditorium, where Blanges addressed them as follows. My feeble, infettered creatures, hear me well. You are our prisoners. No expense has been spared to gather you under this roof, and you can rest assured that my libertine colleagues and I will not hesitate at murder to keep you in line now that we have you here. First and foremost in your minds, as these months unfold, should be one thought. You exist solely for our pleasure. Do not delude yourselves into supposing that the ascendancy given you in the outside world will be accorded you here. A thousand times more subjugated than slaves, you must expect nothing but humiliation. The one virtue whose use I recommend to you is obedience. It and no other befits your present state. You are all equal to each other, but you are all wholly subservient to the four of us. You shall address us not by name, but by the title Lord. When you are called by one of us, you bow. When you pass one of us, you genuflect. In short, we are everything and you are nothing. I will not conceal from you the fact that your service will be painful and rigorous. Our demands will be great and the slightest delinquencies will be redressed immediately with corporal and afflicting punishments. Presently, you will be read a list of statutes. You are to obey them unfailingly. As concerns matters which may not have been covered therein, I can advise you only that you use your imagination to figure out what we might desire in a given instance. In short, let our desires be your laws. Fly to their bidding. Anticipate them. Help them in giving birth. Not that you have much to gain by doing so, but simply because, by not doing so, you have a great deal to lose. Give thought, momentarily, to your circumstances, and may these reflections make you quake. You are beyond the borders of France, in the depths of an uninhabited forest, and high among naked mountains. The paths on which you were brought here were destroyed behind you, you are enclosed in an impregnable fortress. No one on earth knows that you are here. You are beyond the reach of friends and relatives, and as far as the outside world is concerned, you are already dead. Thus, if you breathe, it is only by the leave of your lords. And who are we to whom you find yourselves subordinated? Beings of profound wickedness, one and all. Villains who have no god but their lust, no laws but the limits of their endurance, no cares but for their pleasures, unprincipled, debauched, profligate, atheistic. There will, no doubt, be very few imaginable excesses to which we will not be carried. If, unhappily, some of your lives are sacrificed to our intemperance, adjust bravely to the situation. If it is of any consolation to you, remember that none of us is going to live forever, and the best thing which can happen to a woman is to die young. Lastly, let me say to you that the one insolence, above all for which we simply will not stand, is begging for pity in the name of your so-called God. To those of you who still believe in him, let me point out that while he may have your souls, it is your Lord's, my three libertine friends and I, who have your bodies. And if, as the activities of the four months progress, you are tempted to think about this God of yours, ask yourselves these questions. If there were a God, and he were to have any power, would he permit the virtue which honours him, and which you profess, to be sacrificed at the altar of libertinage? Would he permit four scoundrels like us to take you prisoner and to subject you to the most monstrous caprices, and all with total impunity? Would he allow a feeble creature like me, who would, face to face with him, as a fly speck on a mountain, would he, I say, allow such a creature to ridicule him, to degrade him, to make sport of him, as I do every instant of the day? No, my friends, there is no god within the castle of Silling, save your four lords. Remember that.
and though all may not go well for you, you shall at least have the satisfaction of knowing that you go to your grave without illusions. This sermon having been given, the duke descended from his perch. Thereupon every one present, except the four madams and eight fuckers, who knew very well that they were there as priestesses and acolytes rather than as victims, every one, I say, burst into tears. Our four champions, untouched by this spectacle, retired to their chambers and went soundly to sleep, knowing that on the morrow, at the stroke of ten, the curtain would rise on a saga of libertinage which was to continue uninterrupted for four entire months.